Unlocking the secrets of the ancient world has long been a mystery, but what if we told you that the Great Pyramid of Giza, one of the world's most perplexing structures, is slowly unveiling all of its treasures? That's exactly what we're going to do as we delve further and deeper inside. Join us as we go on a step-by-step -step quest to unravel the mysteries of the Great Pyramid and its hidden treasures like never before. The tombs of Egypt's famous kings and nobles were designed to keep the deceased corpse and valuable secure for eternity. But while many have survived for thousands of years, their contents have typically vanished relatively swiftly. Tomb robbing was recognized as a severe problem in ancient Egypt as early as the early dynastic period during the construction of Djoser's Pyramid Complex. To discourage theft, the burial chamber was purposely positioned and the chambers and passageways of the tomb were packed with trash. Yet, the tomb was broken into and stolen. Even the king's mummy was taken. A similar paradigm was used in the construction of the Giza pyramids during the Old Kingdom of Egypt, with the same outcomes. Although the Great Pyramid and the others remain standing, none of the wealth buried with the Fourth Dynasty's monarchs, Khufu, Khafre, and Minkari, have been discovered in the buildings, nor have any of the bodies. Excretion texts on tomb doors and lintels were supposed to deter such thefts, and Egyptian belief in life after death, in which the dead could interact with the living, should have instilled greater respect and fear of a haunting, in would-be thieves, but neither was strong enough to deter the temptation of easy riches with little risk. The problem had grown so acute by the time of the New Kingdom of Egypt that Amenhotep I commissioned the construction of a separate town near Thebes with easy access to a new royal necropolis that would be more secure. Nowadays, this new burial site is known as the Valley of the Kings, as does the adjoining Valley of the Queens, and the settlement is known as Dair el Medina. They were positioned outside of Thebes in the desert, far from easy access, and the town was purposefully secluded from the rest of the Theban civilization. Yet even these precautions were insufficient to safeguard the graves. The tomb of the New Kingdom King, Tutankhamun, discovered by Howard Carter in 1922 CE, is the most famous of all from ancient Egypt. Tutankhamun's tomb is worth around three quarters of a billion dollars. His gilded coffin alone is worth 13 million dollars. Think about it. All that money for a coffin. Tutankhamun's tomb remained remarkably untouched, and it was really broken into and plundered twice in antiquity because it was mistakenly buried by the ancient workers who erected Ramses VI's tomb nearby. It's unclear how this happened, but the workmen building that tomb buried the earlier one without a trace, preserving it until the 20th century CE when Carter discovered it. The deceased riches were so immense that the officials tasked with keeping them safe could easily be bought. Egypt was a cashless society until the Persians arrived in 525 BCE, thus the wealth taken from the tombs could not have been traded for money or employed in trade. Because stolen goods were meant to be reported to the authorities promptly, one could not simply walk into the marketplace with a golden scepter, for example, and sell it for some grain sacks. Amenhotep I commissioned the town now known as Dair el Medina primarily for this reason. Dair el Medina and the neighboring necropolises, originally referred to in government papers as Set Ma'at or the Place of Truth, were expected to be putting an end to tomb theft once and for all. The village laborers would build the graves and protect them, and because they relied on the state for their income and housing, they would be loyal and secretive about the location of the tombs and the quantity of treasure contained within. Dair el Medina was not a self-sufficient village. It lacked agricultural development and a water supply, relying on monthly deliveries of commodities in payment from Thebes and daily Nile imports. These supplies were mostly uniform, not particularly lavish, and did not always arrive on time. The villagers manufactured their own products and bartered with one another, but the temptation to steal wealth from a tomb, walk the hour or so to Thebes, and swap it for a luxury proved too much for some of the laborers. People who were supposed to protect the tombs broke in and robbed them using the same tools they had used to build them. Strange, right? The protectors turned robbers. Despite their greatest efforts, ancient Egyptian authorities were never able to solve the problem of tomb robbery. 
Hey, we hope you like this incredible adventure into the Great Pyramid, discovering its hidden treasures and uncovering old mysteries. Stay tuned for more incredible excursions as we explore the mysteries of the past. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more great content. And thanks for watching.